All right, um, you're welcome to this um, final part. And uh, well, it's been quite a journey, and I'm once again very glad for um, everyone who was a part of it. I believe that um, there is a, a token of destiny in all of us, and that token is what is drawing us into um, things like this. Even though, yes, it's something that I believe is for everyone, but not everyone will be able to make the commitment, be faithful with it, or pay the price to actually stick through it. You know the whole process. Okay. So, um, in conclusion to all that we've been um, talking about, I also just feel the necessity to just share a couple of things with us. So, this will be like a parting gift to everyone um, who has been here. And um, the concept of what I want to talk about is going to be the concept of lands or territories. For those who have been listening or being a part of this journey, um, you'd understand how important and significant land and territories will be in this time of the year, in this time um, and in this season. But before we get into all that land and territory things, um, there are a couple of things that we need to uh, bring into perspective. The first thing is, um, I've been a proponent of this, and that is the fact that your decisions are the reason why you're where you are today. No one should be um, the excuse, really. As long as you're mature and you're more than 18 years, your decisions are where and the reason why you're where you are today. I know it's easy to blame, oh, the government. I was born in Nigeria. I was born in the UK. I was born somewhere, Iraq, wherever. As long as you've become mature, you need to have that sense of responsibility that the course of your life is largely dependent on your own choices and your own decisions. So decisions are very key and one of the things we've stressed so far is that the order of the decisions you need to make for the better quality of life is your spiritual decisions, your financial decisions and then your political decisions and in that order of significance and importance. Now, after finding the um, very fact that um, the reason why you are where you are today is by reason of the decisions that you've made, you also need to understand that decisions are more powerful than choices. People usually think it's the other way, but uh, we're going to get to that um, briefly. If you really want to change the course of your life, you really have to begin to change your decisions. Oh, let me change it. Let me change what I said. If you want to change the course of your life, if it has not gotten to the point of changing the trajectory, the quality of your decisions, nothing is going to change. No matter how much you prayed, no matter how much you fasted, no matter what spiritual, whatever it is you've done, no matter the new relationships that have come into your life, until you realize what are the decisions I'm making that is not allowing my life to move in the path it's supposed to go. And what are the decisions I need to start doing, to start making, to start taking, if I want to take my life into the, the promised land, uh, metaphorically? If you've not gotten to that path, you will never change. Things will never change. Because the quality of the decisions you make evidently becomes the quality of your life. And you just have to take this and understand how it actually does work. Now, so what is the difference, slight difference between decisions and choices? Now, when you do something, you stand by a choice. But the reason why decisions are powerful is that your choice could do could mean um, omission. That means not doing anything. But not doing anything is a decision. That means that you have made the decisions to stick to the status quo, to stick to the current pattern and continue the way things have always been. And so that's the reason why decisions are more powerful. So I'll put it this way. If for people who use the mapping system, whether it's um, Google Map or Lyft or whatever, or the, the hailing taxi apps, when you're navigating the app, what's the first thing you always do? You actually decide where your pickup point is and where your destination is. That is decision. Now, do you know that the moment the decisions have been made, the choices now go on? What's the choices? The choice of the route you need to take to take you to that point of decision. Now, the choices can change. 
So maybe there's a traffic in this area. You can reroute it. But it does not change the decision. That is what you've already set in your map that you're going to. So the issue a lot of people have is that they are hoping to change their destination. But what they are changing, they are rerouting the map. Forgetting that no matter how hard you reroute the map, if you don't change your destination point, you will continue to waste time going round and round and eventually end in the same place. And so you need to understand the place of meditations and contemplations because that's where decisions are formed and forged. Now, it is only when you change your destination that where you're going to end will change. There are lots of people who are being busy with too many things in life. But the thing they're actually busy doing is rerouting. They've not taken the most significant and important part of reflecting upon the decisions that is responsible for the choices and the actualities that their life is actually producing for them. And so it's really important for you. Everything you do is based on the decision. No matter how delusional you want to be with yourself, no matter how truthful you want to be with yourself, you must come to the point that decisions are the key. If you know you're going to pray, the choice, the good choice would be to stand up and pray. But if you say, oh, I'm tired, can we make it tomorrow? You have made a decision. And that decision is already rerouting and creating the course of how your life is actually going to be and how your life is actually going to turn out. I think it's very important to begin to see things from a point of decisions and not just choices. It doesn't mean choices are not important, but decisions outweigh choices in the gravity of how it has the potential and the propensity to change the course of your life. Now, let's talk about the promised land, which is sometimes is fictitious, sometimes it's metaphorical, sometimes it's revealed, sometimes it's delusional depending on the decisions and the choices that you make. But everyone has a place, a land in their mind that has been hardwired into their system. And the choices they make in life will lead them into that land. The issue is that some people choose a good land, but their decisions are taking them to a bad land. Now, when we engage with God, when you engage with God, who is the chief creator, he lets you to understand where you know it. There is that sense you have in your heart, in your soul. You actually know what your life is supposed to be, what your life is supposed to look like. But if you don't make the right decisions, you're not going to end there. Now, one of the things you really need to understand that a lot of people don't say enough about promised land. It is a promised land. Please listen to me, and this is where it's very important. It is a promised land because it's a good land. But it is a good land because someone is actually already there. Because someone is actually already taking care of it. If you leave a land without tending to it, <clears throat> it's, it becomes a land of, um, um, what do you call these things? Weeds and it overgrows and it's not a delight some land. So you need to understand that the promised land you are claiming and hoping for is actually a promising land because someone is already there. So what should be your attitude towards this promised land? Now I wrote a couple of things here, that's what I'm looking at the book. I said, it's, if it's a good land, it's because someone is already there. Because lands don't tend to themselves. They need a gardener. They, they need a prince. They need someone that will actually take care of the economy, the politics, the spirituality, the atmosphere you know, um, of that place. Now, one of the things we have to do, especially for the extremely religious people, is your concept of righteousness. I remember the time the Holy Spirit shared this with me. I, it kind of blew my mind. You know, people. a lot of people think that righteousness means that uh, doing what is right, being peaceful with all people. That's not really what righteousness is with regards to God's perspective. Now, righteousness means having a right standing with God. That means you and God are standing in the same place. You are in agreement. That's what righteousness means. So, 
It means that when you read through the scriptures and you hear the Lord telling the Israelites, for example, that go into the land of the Canaanites and destroy their land, anyone who sees that act of the Israelites will say, wow, this is wickedness. You're hurting people. You're killing people. You're taking their land. It's their hard-earned land. But from God's perspective, that is righteous acts. Some will say, oh, um, when God sealed the Ark of Noah, that was wicked. Why not just allow people? But that is righteousness. Because God gave them conditions. There was a call to them. They rejected, remember, the decisions they made. They did not choose the Ark. The decisions they made was anti-Ark, anti-safety. And so you need to understand that the land God is calling you into, which is your promised land, you will need to fight for it. Because there is already a king there. There is already a prince there. There is already someone manning and taking care of that system. And so you must fight for the land. You must overthrow kings. And you must take what is yours. Now, what brings the balance in righteousness is that it must be the things that are commanded by your God with regards to your position into the promised land. If God says, take over the land, and this is how you should take over the land, righteousness will be to align with that. Not going with popular opinion, not going with mob culture, not going with pop culture, but going with God culture, your God culture. Now, that is very key. And this means that you actually need to be able to hear God, you know, and transcribe that which you are hearing into instructions that you'd execute in order to get the kind of results um, that you need to get. Now, one of the final things I also want to share with us is if you don't take that land, it will never be yours. A gentleman, this is not the time to be a gentleman. This is the time to be warriors. This is the time to be restless. This is the time to break yokes and to set yourself free and then to begin to take what is yours. But it's beyond you just saying, I take the land that is mine. You know, the land is mine, I confess it. One of the ways to do this, as we can see all through the rise and fall of colonies and civilizations and dynasties, is you require an institution in order to take it. And institutions come with a grand agenda that drives it. It comes with resources that backs it. It comes with relationships or alliances that are forged. And then it comes with systems and structures of culture. Culture talks about the way the people live, their language, the way they dress, their attitudes and all of that. And so if you really want to take a land, you must think in these terms. And that is why one person cannot be an institution. You need to understand your tribe, your people, your place, and then grow in the resources of that. And then you will have the power to take the land that God or your God has given to you. So you have to think in terms of institution. You have to think in terms of execution. You have to think in terms of force, of power. You cannot take a land without power. You can't, diplomacy is not the way to go in this season, especially when we're looking at it from the, um, the core spiritual angle. And that is very important. And so the final thing I want to share with you is as we're advancing into the new season, you must have the mindset of a fighter, of someone who forcefully takes things. Now, I'm not saying in a tyrannical way, but in obedience to what God has said. So for example, if the instruction is that you need to make, hypothetically, a hundred million naira before the end of the year. You know that being a gentleman will not get you that goal. You have to forcefully think about all the ways to make that money legally. What that means is that you will not be relaxed. You will act with a sense of urgency. Because you know that the time you have to make all that you need to make is quite short. So that's the force I'm talking about. So there is a force in which you must act in order to take that which God has given to you. Or that which God has called to be yours. And so that's what the land is about. This, that's what the territory is about. You will have to fight. There will be countercultures. 
that are against what God is instituting. You must fight it. This is not the time to be silent or quiet about things that you know that is not in the plan and purpose of God for your life. If there's a culture bringing it, that's because that culture is already thinking about territories and you're not. So you have to stand up, take your place and fight. If there's anything that is affecting the future of your children, you've got to fight it. If anything is going to affect your financial capacity in the next 10 years, you have to fight it. If there are policies and legislations and alliances that will not give you the best quality of life, you've got to fight it. And so you have to begin to think in terms of institution, in terms of power, in terms of force alliances, and in terms of culture. This is not for feeble-hearted people. This will change you into another man, another woman, another person. And you know, um, one of the scriptures says that since the time of John the Baptizer, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, violent takes it by force. This is that time where the violent must arise. Not violent in a tyrannical way, but in righteous violence, in holy anger. To know that your life will not go the way it's supposed to go if you stay the way you are staying. You have to make certain decisions that will compel you to stand and fight and take what you know that is already yours. I cannot overemphasize all of the things um, that I've mentioned here, but I do believe that and hope that this will strike a chord for you and it, it will take you to the place of consecration where you actually get to sit down and ponder about life and re-strategize on how you're going to take the lands that God has given you. Sometimes to take it means you have to grow your financial resources in order to have the capacity to take it. Sometimes you have to forge alliances with people in order to take it. Sometimes you have to grow your skill and experience and expertise in order to take it. Sometimes it is brute military force. But whatever it is, know that if you don't decide to take that land, you will die without owning or seeing that land that has been promised to you. And sadly, there are many generations who have lived this way. They have plans of greatness, thoughts of greatness, promises of greatness, but they never achieved. Do not repeat that cycle. That cycle can break with you. But in order for it to break with you, you have to be restless. You have to be dogged. And you really do have to be a fighter. I don't want to say too many things, but I really do hope that this strikes a chord with you. I will enable you to reevaluate your life and know that in order to get to where you know is your wealthy place, you must change your decisions. And that will evidently change choices. I hope we're going to see you again in the future and it will bring me so much joy seeing you leaving your purpose and moving closer to that land that you know is the land of your purpose. This is how kind of Kenny Miyagi and I really do hope and wish you all the very best in what the future holds. Remember, the future will not be won by gentlemen. The future will be won by warriors. Have a great time.